Hi, everyone. We're Dwight and Lana Simon from Simon Auto Sales Incorporated in Regina. And we'd love to share with you today the journey that we've been on from the beginnings of Simon Auto to today. We've been in business now 25 years. And the beginnings was uh, quite interesting. I had people ask me all the time saying, well, you must be uh, kind of a gearhead, a real car guy. I'd love the car business. I'm more of a gearhead than Dwight is, to be honest. Absolutely, (laughs) absolutely. Uh, it really didn't matter to me what it was that I was doing, to, as long as I was in business for myself. It could have been furniture, it could have been uh, windows, it wouldn't have mattered. But just to be in business for myself, that was my desire. He's always been an entrepreneur, and I was based in a corporate background with a lot of administrative defined roles and a secure, stable income. So, so we were not in the same mind space uh, in that regard, but it does take two to tango. And so you bring one element of, of uh, vision and surprise and unexpected with one that can anchor and, and solidify financially and time management and voila, you get a great business uh, eventually, but not right away. <laughs> we had some growing pains. We did. So we started uh, about 1998, and I remember it was a friend of mine who was uh, buying cars down in the United States and bringing them up to Canada and selling them. And um, I was unhappy with my job again uh, that I'd had. And um, he said, Dwight, he goes, uh, how much are you making at your job? And I told him how much I was making. He says, oh, we can do that easy by just by bringing some cars up and selling them. Um, so we borrowed $10,000 from her parents and started our first, uh, bought our, went down and bought our first car. And that's the visionary part of it and the perfect enterprise. Let's make some money, forgetting the fact that you need insurance and paperwork, etc. And of course, we had an accident. We, he had an accident with the vehicle for which we thought we were covered and it turned out that we were not. And we lost our investment, it was totaled off. We had no more money to buy any more inventory and it was back to square one. But Dwight being the creative fellow that he was, uh, always found a way to do that. When you don't have money, you have to be creative. So we uh, started consigning. Nobody in Regina was really doing that at that point in time. So I would uh, put an ad out and say, if you want to sell your vehicle, having trouble selling your vehicle, bring it to me. I'll take a small commission and we'd sell the vehicle for those people. Yeah. And, uh, that's how we started. And I remember our first website, a good friend of ours, uh, built our first, well, not just our first website, I believe it was the first website in the car business in Regina. And of course, being a used car dealer, you know, that was unheard of. Well, I mean, a website for a used car, I mean, that was revolutionary. So we we did pioneer that. But again, being creative, you know, uh, when you you have to dig deep to find solutions, you do when you want to make it work. And as an entrepreneur that, you know, did not, would not, could not hold a job, I remember the calls from the mall, uh, the pay phone, and, and that was before the advent of cell phones, and we'll get there because that's how we eventually started the, the, the business was with one cell phone, the rent, and just enough money to you know keep putting newspaper ads. But he would continually call from the mall on the pay phone when he lost his job, and, and so we just knew we had to do this and had to make it work. So with the blend of me holding a bit of a financial anchor for us with secure income, he could run out and, and build this business together, and, and that's what we, we did. Yeah, so we started our first uh, uh, enterprise from our our apartment where we were actually. We were renting a townhouse in a, in a structure where you only had one assigned parking stall and of course we had more than that because we had these consigned vehicles or the one purchased vehicle and uh, the city began to knock on the door and uh, <laughs> we had to start following some rules and get real with our business. Yeah, so, so we, we uh, secured a location on Park Street and rented that location and uh, started with um, a cell phone, enough money for the first month's rent. Uh, and a few car ads. Yeah, and I remember that time too. It was in 1998, and uh, I was with the, the newspaper ads and the just the brand new cell phone that we had got. I was in the hospital with our yeah. first child, just coming out of the hospital, and had run these ads in the newspaper and getting calls like crazy. And I got the child, and Dwight was trying to show the car, and so we moved to our new location, bought a house which was only two blocks away from yep. the car lot. Um, it was it was very humble beginnings, and and that first location, uh, we only had enough room for 35 or so cars, and we only had three staff there at that location. But we were growing; we could see it. It would turn into something but we were there for 15 years and uh, it was sales only there was no room for service there we had an outdoor uh, toilet the location was a former gas station so you had to go outside and around the building to that location but as I said Dwight being a visionary uh, we soon outgrew that and, and decided to make another move 
So we, uh, we secured a place on uh, Victoria Avenue, uh, which was uh, nice. It had two bays where we could actually do some mechanic work, mm -hmm. uh, do some cleanups. Uh, it had uh, room for more cars, many more cars, and some higher traffic areas. So we were pretty excited to move there. And during that time, we started uh, a few other ventures. Uh, some, we want, some we'd like to expand upon, some we don't want to expand upon. Well, all-terrain vehicles, all -terrain sport vehicles. utilities and motorcycles, and we and had some rentals going on from that location. The company that was supplying us went into bankruptcy and left us as orphans with no parts or service, so that was a kind of a fiasco. Um, we then entered into the uh, car business, sorry, the car rental business through another company. We had a, a franchise for a car rental agency in Swift Current. We opened a dealership in Swift Current along with a car rental agency at the same time. Um, we expanded that car rental agency into Saskatoon. We started selling cars out of Mooseman, Saskatchewan through another independent. Uh, all those things drew a lot of our time and uh, didn't provide us a lot more of the income. Matter of fact, some of them drew more expense and we ended up in some serious some trouble. Some serious financial trouble and again, you know, being the, the detail side of the business and Dwight being the vision, the vision is more, bigger, better, greater, but when the, the, the red ink is pouring out and fast as almost blood, mm -hmm. uh, we really had to make a shift. So we sought some uh, professional advice, so to speak, nice. from a consulting firm who were versed in, you know, helping businesses overcome obstacle. And now we'd already overcome some, and uh, they thought that they could take us to the next level. Yeah. But soon we found out. We paid them ten thousand dollars. We paid them ten thousand dollars <laughs> for the advice to. Yeah. Shut the doors. Shut the doors. We sat down across the table from the person who was doing the uh, analysis after three months, and they said, uh, you might as well close your doors. You can't make it. Uh, you're bleeding ink. Uh, you can't recover from this. And this went on, and I'm taking this very serious. I'm thinking, wow, this is something, this is my dream, and i got to shut this down? And then they said something really foolish. I said, I don't know who buys used cars now anymore anyways. Well, they right. discounted everything they'd said yeah. before that. And I said, you know what? I stood up. I said, Lana, I'm, I'm done. I'll meet you down in the car. So he left me in the meeting with this person and the red ink in the books. And I had to conclude the meeting and, and come up with, they were going to make recommendations. And I said, you know what? Thank you, but no thank you. We don't need any more recommendations. We'll, we'll fly on our own and, and we'll figure this out. And we did. Yeah. We made some tough decisions. Um, yeah. I said, you know, Lana, I said, we're not stupid people. We know what makes money. We know what loses money. And, and we can see in our own business where we're losing money and where we're making money. And we just had to make some tough decisions. You know, we had staff employed in those locations. And yeah, by that time we had um, five staff at the Regina location. We had six staff or so in the Swift Current location. We had four to five staff up in Saskatoon who were deriving an income uh, by our ventures. And uh, so we, we, we made the tough decisions and, and that's what you do have to do if you're going to uh, continue to float the boat and, and and get to the shore. You just have to ride through the waves. And so we did that and we stayed married. Here we are today. <laughs> yep. We had some, some, some influence in our life. I remember a friend coming to me one time, didn't even know what kind of condition we were in business-wise, but said, uh, just for some, some reason, the conversation came around to business. He goes, yeah, Dwight, you know, it's just my experience that a lot of people who have their own businesses and having trouble quit too soon. That success is just around the corner. The breakthrough is just around the corner. And he didn't know we were in that situation, but I really took that to heart. I thought, yeah, you know what? He's he's right. It could be just around the corner. So we brought everything back to Mecca. He said, you know, let's bring it all Shut back. Shut down to Swift Current uh, in 2018. And we shut down Saskatoon in the same year. It, at that time, too, my father was going through a cancer diagnosis and eventually passed away. Dwight's father passed away during that time as well. We had our kids graduating from high school one year after another within that close time frame. And uh, again, the tough decision, life just happens. Yeah. And uh, you just grit your teeth and... and and hold hands and yeah. pray. Yeah. We're praying people. Praying that people. helps. We believe. Yeah. And we started making some headway. We started paying off our debts. We started, a lot of our suppliers worked with us. You know, a lot of them said, hey, you know, we'll work with you. Let's make some steps towards getting everything paid out. And uh, so that was... We were seeing triple digit losses during that time. When I say triple, well, triple in before the comma. And then, yeah, so yeah. that's six digit, but six yeah, digit losses. six digit losses. And um, we recovered. Uh, and not only that, we did, although some of our suppliers were 
growing weary of calling, I assured them we would pay and there was not one supplier that remained unpaid by the end of the day. It may have taken 18 months and, and usually you're supposed to be 30 to 60 days. That's the financial world I came from. But integrity and your word is, is worth more than that financial deficit and we did pay everybody off to this day. So although the location on Victoria Avenue, when we brought everything back to, to the center of the hub of where we you know, began to really get serious about building the business and realized what worked, it was still too small. Um, there was not enough service bays, uh, there was more demand, we were growing at that point, we still had you know, five staff. Um, but we, we had the vision and we, we wanted to move again and we were approached by our former landlord from the Park Street location. And he didn't even know we were entertaining a move, but Dwight can maybe speak yeah. to that. We, we'd driven up and down Broad Street and up and down all kinds of places looking for a, a possible location. And um, our former landlord phoned me and just out of the blue said, uh, just curious if you and Lana would be interested in, uh, in moving. If you're looking for a new location, I said, well, it's funny that you would call because we've been looking. And he says, well, I have a place on Broad Street. I said, where on Broad Street? And he told me where it was on Broad Street. And I said, no, that belongs to another dealership. He goes, no, 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 I own the building. He said, they're just leasing from me. He said, I said, well, when can you get them out? He goes, I give them 30 days. He goes, well, give them 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> so Dwight's vision started coming together and the old hand yeah. clapping came yeah. to be and we started the wheels in motion, so to speak, uh, pun intended, mm -hmm. <laughs> to move to Broad Street, which in Regina is affectionately known as Carlot Alley. And uh, there's a whole strip of big dog dealers there. I mean, the name brands, the, the glitzy lights, the fancy showrooms, and we were not that we don't have new, we just yeah. have used vehicles, which who buys used vehicles anyway, That's apparently. Right. <laughs> but uh, we had something to prove and we had something to showcase and we knew who we were. Um, and so we, we took the plunge and moved yeah. everything over to Broad Street where we're currently located, 1810 Second Ave North in Regina. And um, that building, we began leasing just like the other location, but we'd always had a vision to purchase. We, we, we wanted to be in command of our own ship and be able to tell staff, again, this is our forever home, potentially. Uh, if we want it to be, it can be. No one can pull the rug out from under us. Yeah. So at this point, we, we can house over 100 cars. Yeah. We have three service bays. We have a, a complete staff complement, and I love this one, and people who know me well will understand when I say we're a staff of 13. Yes, we have the 13th man. Uh, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the 13th man, but uh, we're thriving. Uh, some of our staff has been with us uh, 10 years now, so uh, we don't have a very high turnover. Our staff is quite, uh, quite loyal. Uh, we run things different. We always wanted to have a different way of running a car business. Uh, we don't pay a commission uh, to our to our salespeople. We work together as a team. We pay a bonus structure based on volume, um, and that seems to work really well for us. You got to have the right people when that when you're doing that because everybody's got to pull their weight. But we just believe everybody needs to earn a, an honest uh, living, and without the pressure of having to perform under under siege. And it, it is bodes well for the true team environment. You don't, you know, look at the customer coming up saying that's my guy or it's my lead. It's ours. We share. Everybody does. And when you do that, and the dynamic of the word team together, everybody achieves more. When you don't have people vying or fighting over customers and sharing bonus structure, it just makes the whole enterprise operate more smoothly and there's a lot more synergy and, and good energy in the building when people walk in the door. Yeah. We also implemented a uh, one price uh, where we did no haggling. Um, we really wanted to do that. Number one, it saves a lot of time uh, and it saves a lot of the, the angst that people have when they come to a car dealership because the people were under a lot of ang ang anguish thinking, I got to go buy a car. I'm going to have to deal with the salesman. I'm going to have to haggle over the price. I don't know if I'm going to get the right price. We just, we took it all away. We said, this is our price. We made the price that we could live with the best price we could make it and that is the price and that's the way we do business today we don't we don't negotiate on price and um, we have found that to be such a more relaxed atmosphere plus the fact that we're a team environment where the, the salesmen aren't vying for that's my up and this is my guy uh, it, it's 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 been a real soft welcoming and welcoming yeah. process for people to come and buy a car so one of the things about 
coming from the bottom till we're here is 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 branding yourself and and making yourself known and aware and that's that's half the battle if people know who you are and why you are and how you operate they will want to come and do business with you so i mean we've always said at simon auto sales we're large enough to make a difference yet small enough to care and, and said that, that since we're on park street <laughs> well, we were too small and it really didn't matter. We cared, but nobody else seemed to, you know, but we are now large enough to make a difference and small enough to care. And our staff feel it, you know, they aren't just staff. They don't just come to work to do our beck and call. They're allowed to implement ideas. They're allowed to role play and decide, what if we tried this? Hey, go for it. You know, there is a, a, an openness to, to doing that. and. When people are comfortable, when people feel happy, you know, we, we treat everyone like family. We've got a variety of events through the year. We'll, we'll always have a, a summer party in our home, a barbecue where we invite them and their spouses. And we, you know, have live and entertainment, suppliers, well. suppliers yeah. staff, suppliers, loyal customers even, re repeat buyers have come and, and entertained and visited with us. And it, it's all about that. It's that family environment. So we, we like to welcome them to our home. They see where we live. We have, you know, an open door, so to speak. and. And, um, I mean, we lock it at night, by the way, but, <laughs> um, you know, and we, we have our Christmas event, too. Uh, Christmas is near and dear to us, and, and uh, it's just a time that people can let their hair down, so to speak. Dwight does all the time. And <laughs> we, we invite a number of people to come and enjoy and partake with us, and um, it's, it's a good environment. Well, and, and beyond the staff, I mean, we're a larger part of the Regina and surrounding community and, yeah. and it takes a whole village to raise a family as they say and it, it takes a lot of businesses to make a thriving city yeah. and um, after we overcome the, the red ink and, yeah. and started to make some profit it's not just ours to keep you know yeah. we do love to give back we have a, a wonderful campaign that we've started really a few good. years ago and we we do continue with it we, we used to do it monthly uh, but just time doesn't always permit but when the, the spirit moves us and when something piques our interest and someone approaches us we've got a number of charitable organizations that we give to through our Making a Difference Together campaign where we, we give a significant amount of money every month and we allow the staff to choose. Yeah, yeah, where they get to pick uh, who they'd like to donate a thousand dollar check to. And uh, we've had people give to the Humane Society, we've had people give to CNIB, CNIB NICU, NICU, all uh, kinds of the, good the causes. Legion. Yeah. If something is near and dear to their heart, they will work hard not for us but with us mm -hmm. to realize those profits knowing that they can give them away to something that's yep. near and dear to them yep. so it makes the whole experience not about the money that they can make for themselves when we all make money we're able to give it away yep and i wanted to instill that in our staff as well the opportunity for them to feel the joy of giving back yeah, yeah. well we keep growing and uh you know we just added another employee and um we made our little fourplex where now we've got a, got a big dual use out of some of those desks um, for the accounting people. And well, as I say, we, we have our team of 13. Our 13th man uh, needs a desk. So, you know, we may renovate, we may add on to the building. I, I've always said this is our forever home and it can be. We may buy another site if it comes up and available, but um, we're, we're very happy with where we are. One of the pivotal things I think that's also taken us into the next century or millennium, I guess, now that we're around into the 2000s, when we started in the 90s, started at the bottom, now we're here, we're getting there, was the advent of a lot of the the new way of doing things away from that crazy old cell phone which we still use for texting now not just talking you know paper ads are now media ads facebook and every kind of social platform available but the partnership that we've taken and had the technological gurus come and hold our hand and, and take us to the next level. We're very grateful for the people shooting this video yeah. <laughs> and for, for things they do for us every day to, to launch our business and to um, just make us visible to be who we are, let people see who we are in a diverse environment or you know when they talk about employment diversity or employment equity mm. uh, I mean we've always prided ourselves on being an equitable employer I mean we have visibly different people we have intellectually different people we have socially different people uh, geographically different people we have a visually impaired person he doesn't drive the vehicles he doesn't allow to, to drive the cars but you know everybody can contribute in their way and so you know to fit into Simon Auto Sales it's not necessarily about 
your your technical knowledge or your skill set which you do have to be on point you do have to have a skill set that is required to fill a hole but uh, there's a lot of ways that that can be done and again you can get creative with that you can you can share a role you can have an assistant to someone who isn't visually able um, there's lots of ways you can you can get the job done together as we say and so culturally I think for us it's more important to share the vision, the dynamic, the belief system, the enthusiasm, the integrity than it is what do you know about cars, what do you know about computers, what do you know about finance. You have to know those things, but those things can be taught. Character, culture, integrity are ingrained and, and, and for us that's capital, that's pivotal. Yeah. You know, we started, um, when, when, when I was first in business, I knew a key factor to making this a success was to obtain financing from the banks. And I knocked on doors and I knocked on doors time and time again uh, for financing. And uh, got turned down time and time again because they just said, oh, we just don't have franchise non, we just don't finance non-franchise dealers. And uh, I said, well, I'm gonna be the first. And um, we, we, we I, re I remember I talked to a, a guy that we were doing banking with and uh, I said, could you do our financing? And he said, well, I'll come and see you next week, you know? Uh, and then I, I, we were getting our financing done somewhere else through another, it wasn't a dealer, but through another company that was doing their financing. But they also sold cars. Oh, yeah. so, <laughs> so I remember I got a call from, from uh, this guy that was doing our financing and said, I understand you're looking for your own financing. I said, yeah, so I've always been looking for my own financing. He goes, well, I wish you good luck with that. And uh, we're not going to finance any more of your deals. He was upset because, because I was searching out my own finance. So I phoned this bank back, this guy worked at the bank. And um, I said, boy, I sure hope you're coming to see me this week. Cause he, I missed you last week. And he says, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can get out this week. Why, what's going on? I said, well, I just got cut off from my financer. He goes, you got cut off? I said, yeah, he found out I was looking for my own financing. He goes, oh my goodness. He found out for me, cause I phoned, he phoned me for a reference. <laughs> so then he says, tell you what, you bring your business over to our bank and uh, we'll finance your customers. And that was the start. That was the first bank that financed us. Today we have financing through every chartered bank that finances vehicles, every subprime lender in the, in the province that finances vehicles. And we have some good people that work at our place that know how to use those, those companies to the best advantage for the customer and for, for us as well, um, the financial tools that are there. A lot of times those kinds of avenues are only afforded to the name branded franchise yeah. dealers. And uh, to my knowledge, I mean, I, I may be wrong in my assumption, but there aren't very many of the smaller independent used dealers in the city of Regina that can offer client financing. We're one of the only ones that has a base of uh, a full spectrum of financing for the end client. So, uh, and, and not very many people are able in this economic time to save up five, ten, fifteen thousand right. dollars to purchase a vehicle and as we know, only to get in an accident and have it totaled off. So you're going to want to finance those things. You're going to want to get insurance on those things. We have uh, expanded warranty, extended warranty, insurance policies. We have a, a wide range of offerings to fit any scenario that a client might have. And the, the sound advice given by our staff member not to just sell them something because we may potentially make profit. They only can advise them to sell it if it would be beneficial and beneficial, useful, and needed by them. Yeah, so absolutely. so that's one of the important things to remember too is uh, if it doesn't fit you, it shouldn't be offered to you. Well, one of the things that we always like to tease about when we did go away on a holiday, you know, we wouldn't go for very long because, you know, when you run your own business, you, the dynamics of the details have to get done and those do fall on me. So we take vacations like this. He goes for two weeks, I come back after five to seven days. He's gone and I come back. So so that's the way we vacation. But I remember once we went to Florida and we went to the, the Florida Keys where they have yachts and they have these, you know, guest homes and we were just dreaming at the time that like one day maybe we could be like that. And they all had a title to their estate. They had a, a catchy name and I remember seeing one called the Gables. And I thought, well, like Anne of Green Gables, what's a gable anyway? A gable ended roof okay Man, gables 
And I thought, wow, where we live, there's overhead power lines, there's there's uh, telephone wires in our backyard. We live at the cables. <laughs> and I thought, what would we name if we have an estate when we make it one day? And it came to me immediately, Virginia Slims. Yeah. Now, I'm not a smoker, and those that in the era before me know what Virginia Slims advertisements were. It was when women could smoke and there was a skinny little cigarette. And their tagline, like ours is, large enough to make a difference, small enough to care, was Virginia Slims. You've come a long way, baby. And I thought, never mind the smoking. Dwight, Virginia Slims. You've come a long way, baby. <laughs> so that'll be the name of our estate, the yeah. Virginia Slims. <laughs> Well, it's been a fantastic adventure um, sharing these memories with you and just reminiscing ourselves about what's brought us here to today. But uh, you know what? It's it's never the end. Um, and if it's it's always room to grow. There's always room for more. Uh, come and see us at Simon Auto Sales. If you have ideas or visions or things you'd like to see for the Regina vehicle community, bounce them off us. Come and see us at 1810 2nd Ave North. Love to have a coffee with you. Visit our website. Everything is online there. Uh, our staff can be contacted online. Our website is www now that's old school you see where i came from it's simonautosales.com simon with an a s-i-m-a-n autosales.com and we'd love to hear from you love to see you uh, we love regina thanks for that tagline uh, former mayor and we are simon auto sales inc large enough to make a difference and small enough to care about you